Hey guys, I'm continuing on with the Dumont RA113 restoration. If you recall in the last video, I pretty much finished recapping it and powered it up for the first time. And uh, after a bit of uh, tinkering, I got a trace on the CRT, but not a raster, just a horizontal line. So the first thing I want to do is fix that vertical. So I figured uh, one place to start, which for the troubleshooting is to chuck the tubes. There are two 6SN7s using the vertical circuit, one for the oscillator and one for the output. So I'm chucking them right now. First one, fantastic. Second one, I'm getting intermittent uh, shorts showing on the plate. Although the emissions test is good. But it seems like every time I push the test button, the uh, short light starts fleek, uh, freaking out. So I think I will replace that. And I think there's one more. It's a damper tube. This is also a 6SN7. Uh, I don't see the number on it, but it's got to be. Oh, there it is. Just hard to read. Now, I also noticed that these are all three of these 6SN7s are different types. I think there's a GTA, a GTB, and a GA. Just slight production variations. I'm sure the original they were just all GTs. Don't know if that might make a difference. Although presumably the sub was operating properly at some point with these tubes, so it's probably all right to use the A and B versions. Oh, the owner of this set said that all the tubes have been replaced. But who knows? Although, so far they've all tested good other than that one with the uh, intermittent shorts. So, I'll dig out another 6SN7 and uh, check out the set. I also want to check the um, uh, blocking oscillator transformer. And uh, I guess I should check the uh, yoke for continuity as well. Unfortunately, that made no difference. Still just have the trace. If you're wondering why it looks so horribly out of focus, as I think I mentioned in the earlier video, it's because this Tush CRT is self-focusing, but there's also a focus electromagnet on here, and that's messing it up. I hooked up my scope to the vertical oscillator, and I got nothing. And that is pin one right here. So I'm going to start checking the voltages. Um... Right now I've got my meter on this bus here, which should be minus 55, and that's about what I got. Now I checked this blocking oscillator transformer, and I got weird readings. On this side, where it should be 1310, I got about 168. And on the other side, I got about 900 ohms. So, uh, that seems kind of out of... One thought that occurred to me is they might have this backwards on the schematic and this is the 168 side and this should be 1310 and there might be some other stuff in parallel with this that's pulling the resistance down although well there's nothing else going to pin 3 except the tube so should be okay to check that resistance and circuit uh, and this one's just got a cap on it so hmm uh, I don't know that could be bad and if that's bad I'm sunk until I could find a replacement um, another thing that could be a problem is this cap, which is this big square guy here. Um, I'm not sure if that's a mica or not. Uh, I guess I could uh, chuck that guy and maybe just uh, take it out of the circuit and temporarily clip in a uh, 0 0.01 microfarad film cap or something just to see if I can get this oscillator running. According to the parts list, this capacitor is a mica. And I'm going to assume it's okay for now, because there's a bigger issue. I checked the voltages on this oscillator tube, and the cathode and the grid are alright, but I've got about minus 55 volts on the plate, where it should be 70. Well, if you trace that around, it goes through this fixed resistor and then a variable size control over to this bus, which goes around and around, eventually over to the flyback. That's what they call the B-plus boost the normal B-plus supply for the rest of this set isn't quite enough voltage to drive the vertical circuitry, so they steal some off the flyback. 
Um, they don't say exactly what it is on here, but I'm guessing 600 volts or thereabouts. Which is more than an electrolytic capacitor can normally handle, so they put two in series here. So, could be an issue with that flyback pickoff, uh, or could be these caps. Uh, I think I've only replaced one of those so far. So, first thing I'm going to do is check these resistors, and I'll measure this voltage here. And see what I've actually got. Size control, I believe, is this control right here. I got negative 57 volts on that uh, boost supply, so there's something definitely wrong. I'm going to have to trace out that uh, circuit going back to the flyback and see what's up. I traced out the circuit and got back to this point where I found that there was a bad connection. This orange reddish wire going back here and around over to this power resistor was loose. It might have been from when I replaced this cap or this uh, I don't believe is the original resistor so it might have happened when somebody replaced that. Now that's pretty important to the boost circuit because that's this 5k resistor here that uh, ties back up into that flyback. So let's see what effect that has. Definitely got some weird issues. So the next thing I want to track down, and I got a raster. I think that could be from arcing inside the high voltage box. It's true because the yoke is uh, is a bit off. Just going to focus control. Alright, so. Uh, that takes a load off my mind because uh, I was worried that some very difficult to replace component might be bad. Before I dive into that high voltage box, though, let's see if we can actually get an image on there. Now, these sets use an odd antenna jack. I think it's actually 75 ohms impedance if he's into this coax here. Uh, it's kind of like an RCA jack. Every other set I've got has uh, two screw terminals on the back, 300 ohms impedance. So uh, I don't know that I've got anything handy that I can put in there. Uh, but I guess I could, I don't know, maybe a banana plug will fit. Uh, not quite. Well, I'll find something. I ended up just sticking a test probe lead in there. It'll do for now. Alright, so, let's see if I can actually pick anything up. Kind of. Sort of something. Right around there. You can see the iTunes reacting a little bit as well. Frame. So, right about there. And I'll try filling around with the hold controls and contrast and stuff and see if maybe it could look any better. I adjusted a slug on the horizontal oscillator coil, so uh, I've got a better horizontal hold now. Adjust it a little bit more. So, just put the horizontal. Hold control in the center of its range. Now I'm going to adjust the horizontal coil. There, that's better. So I'm itching to see if we've got any sound. I'm going to see if it's easy to get the speaker out of the cabinet. Should be able to appear on the workbench.
Luckily the speaker was easy to get out. And if you're wondering why didn't I just clip in any old speaker while the output transformer is mounted on the frame. So I really needed to get this up on the workbench. Alright, so let's give this a try. I keep reaching over here because I've said I've got pretty much the uh, volume and power is over here. But on this side it's this knob. And on the outer it's the horizontal hold which just seems like a weird arrangement to me. But that's how they made it. I uh, adjusted the yoke a little bit, so uh, the picture will look a little better. Yeah, well, don't hear anything. Oh, there, we go. Oh, there we go. I'm sure if I had a better antenna, the picture would be a lot better. And it would sink better. Change that before YouTube busts me. Seems like the arcing isn't as bad either. I'm not hearing anything coming out of this box like I was before. So I don't know what's up with that. I think I should still take a look in there. Maybe move some leads around or paint some Corona dope on stuff. Alright, so I think the next thing I gotta do, well, there's still a few caps I gotta replace. There's two paper caps left. One here and one there. And uh, two electrolytic cans to restuff. It turns out that, yeah, an RCA plug fits very nicely. On the pennant input. Fortunately, I have nothing that I can plug that into, so all I did is I just took the center pin of the other end of the RCA with an alligator clip. I got that going to the RF output of my over the air converter box. So, so that's the over the air channel 6 broadcast. Let's see if I can pick up my converter box, which is probably in channel 3 or 4. And 4. There it is. So, tuning dial seems to be a bit off because this is probably in channel 3. And as so often the case with all my vintage sets, they hate the audio output of that converter box. I'm not getting any sound at all. So, flipping this to the other channel. Is this that far off? That was on channel 4. Even though the dial is getting towards 2. I flipped it to channel 3 probably now. And I can't even pick it up now. This is the very first time I've used one of these induct tuner sets with a continuous tuner. I don't know if I'm such a huge fan, I gotta say. I mean, it's an interesting concept, but uh, I do a lot of fiddling. It's so much easier to just clunk, clunk, clunk to get between the channels. Like if you want to go from channel 2 to 13, you gotta crank this thing all the way around. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> this is also an FM radio. That sounds really good. Nice big speaker.
great reception too considering I really have <laughs> not much of an antenna on there. The yeah, alignment seems to be a bit screwed. I'm picking up stations like at two points. So it's there. Uh, it's here again. The alignment in instructions for this set are brutal. I really don't want to do it if I don't have to. I'll show you why in a moment. But, and it's probably the most complex alignment instructions I've seen to date. Yeah, <laughs> low five, fantastic. It's about 10 degrees in Chicago right now. Winter is here. And now finally we can get over to the TV channels again. And finally there's channel 13. They give you a four, uh, fine and a coarse tuning. So you can get around a bit faster if you use the outer dial. What I'm curious about too is the mode switch on this. So, is this go? okay, so it does disable the TV. Tubes are still lit though, like the horizontal output tube. And the CRT filament's still burning, I was wondering about that. So if you play this thing for hours and hours and hours just to hear the radio, you're, you're wearing out your CRT. It's back to TV mode. Well, this just be phonograph mode. There's an external jack on the back, I think, for phono input. Now one advantage given that this filament lit is that you get instant on with the TV if you go between radio and TV, but Something to be aware of if you got one of these sets is that you're wearing out your CRT when you're just listening to the radio. And my understanding is that with this iTube, it's not as useful as you might think. I think the one bar is always fixed. And the other one moves a bit when you tune. And that, that's, that's, that's the way it's supposed to work. And it's not all that exciting. I wish I had another signal source in here. It's convenient to use so I can actually... Well, if the radio sound is working that well, I'm sure the TV sound does too. Just not with this signal source I'm using right now. It's weird though, there's absolutely no sound coming through at all. Makes me wonder if this box might even be muted. I'll grab the remote control and make sure it's not. The volume was at about 70%, but it definitely wasn't muted. I jacked it up all the way and it made no difference. Still zero sound. Uh, so I'll leave that aside till I get a different signal source hooked up. Uh, but what I'd like to do now is try using a full-size 17-inch picture tube. This is unmarked. It's a tube I got off of uh, eBay just on a gamble, on a whim. I think I paid 30 bucks for it. It's a rebuild. You can clearly see this glass has been 
melted here. And the getters look like hell, but it does test okay on my CR70, but I've never actually looked it up to a set, so I figured this would be a good time. Because I want to see um, how good the picture can look on a real CRT without this focus issue. Alright, let's give this a try. Got it propped up as best I can. Stuck some rags under the yoke to kind of hold it in place. And let's see, yeah, filament's lit. I'll have to adjust the iron trap magnet. I'm sure. Yeah, no image. Grr, that's no good. I'm holding up with the magnet, I got nothing. Well, this isn't the real CRT that goes with this set, so I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Uh, line voltage is a tad low, too. I'm going to jack that up. Line voltage can have some impact on B plus in the whole operation of the set. Alright, so bit by bit, I am getting there. Next up, I'm going to stop fooling around with this and finish the recap. And then uh, perhaps slide this into the cabinet. But I'm going to cut this video off now and post this because I'm sure you guys are sitting on the edges of your seats wanting to know if I got the set working or not.